Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Welcome to a one-off album review. But it's part, it is part five of the Gong story. We had part four on Monday, the first show of the week, and we're going to end the week with this one-off incarnation of Gong called Planet Gong. As I said, Planet Gong is one of the many incarnations of Gong. This is 1977, and David Allen and Judy Smith teamed up with members of a band called Here and Now, and they created this band called um, Planet Gong. I mean, the band performed throughout the, for the next two years, and the only thing they released is a single, which was called Opium for the People. It was the only studio thing they did. And a live album, which is what we're going to talk about. Now, the album is called Live Floating Anarchy 1977. It came out in 1978 and it was recorded on the 6th of November 1977 at the Banner Moon Observatory Studio in France in Toulouse. And the people playing on this and I'll tell you exactly what the credits were on the back of the album um, bass guitar and tree trunk Keith Missil choir choir of angels Annie Wombat Sue's the booze drums drummery and asides Kif Kif Le Batilleur Electric guitar and hugs and drogophone and is Mr. David Allen. Performer, arms, legs and bodies, Marie Clear Wright. <laughs> Synthesizers is Gavin Dablitz. And the vocals and the space whisperer is the incredible Julie Smith. So this opens up with a thing called psychological overture. Now this opens with Judy Smith with a weird, wonderful, psychedelic voice. It's weird, but cleverly done. It sets up the, the show. Then we get a thing called Floating Anarchy. This is absolutely tremendous. Um, Davy's guitar work is just amazing to listen to. As a little, it goes a bit weird in it. But you just have to admire the munition, the musicianship. Very, very good track. Um, then we get a thing called Stone Enoch Frankenstein. This is an interesting track. It's a space rock track. Lots of shouting and screaming on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't get in, get over that. Um, but the bass line is absolutely brilliant. Um, very, very, very good um, bass line. Proper space rock. Except it is spoiled by the shouting. And I didn't know why we had to do that, but there you go. Then we get a thing called uh, New Age Transformation Try and No More Sages. It's quite a long piece. Uh, it's really good. Um, I love the start of this. It's got some nice keyboards in it. Then you get in Judy Smith doing one of her um, sort of recitals. Really interesting. And it's just just great space rock. Then we get the single they released. I haven't found it yet. Uh, but I'm sure I'll find it and put it, if I find it, I'll put it in the playlist. And it's called Opium for the People. Um, they did release this as a studio track and it's got some great guitar work from David Allen on this and I actually love this track uh, it's my favourite one on the album then we get a 15 minute epic and it calls Ali Baba Black Sheep have you any bullshit <laughs> and Mama Maya Mantrum 
it's just an incredible bit of space rock lots of jams I'm sure they just went off on one uh, some sound like they're a bit drunk doing the, the vocals probably was for all I know but I think it's quite good actually um, some of the musicianship on this is absolutely brilliant. I, I was really sh amazed by this live album. Um, it must be the most interesting one I've ever listened to. And um, sometimes I just wonder what the hell's going on, and I couldn't understand the lyrics. But the highlight for this, though, is the these musicians. They're very good musicians and some, some tremendous guitar work from David Allen throughout this album. And you've got Jilly's um, whispering vocals, they just add atmosphere to it. I quite enjoy listening to this in a very strange way. I've listened to it a couple of times and uh, I quite enjoy it. It's really out of my comfort zone, but I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's a live album. I do like live music, and uh, there's lots of atmosphere. I'll give it that. Um, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay, then, folks, that's all for this week. Um, don't forget that if you want to um, nominate someone for the RTO Wally of the Year, a musician or someone in the music business that has really got up your nose this year. Um, you can go and register your nominee on the community page or on Facebook or anywhere or even just drop me an email, I don't mind. You've got to give a reason though, you've got to give a good reason why they, you want to nominate them. Nominations close on Tuesday. Wednesday morning they will go up on the community in a poll and on Twitter and the Facebook page um, and then there will be a live poll on on the live stream and we will announce the winner then um, I'll be back on Monday. Um, what have I got for you Monday? Well, we're going to be a bit Christmassy on Monday because it is the week before Christmas. Um, we're going to. I'm going to go through my what my favourite top ten Christmas albums and a few honourable mentions. This is a mixture of some albums that I've brought over the years, and there are some of from my childhood as well. So it's a bit of a mixture of what I like and ones from my childhood that bring back Christmases when I was younger and then classic album we're going to look at the Beach Boys Christmas album an album that only sold gazillions within the shores of America didn't sell outside America so we're going to have a look why it didn't appeal to the rest of the world so have a great weekend it's the world cup final this weekend so um lots going on and uh i will see you all on monday take care for now bye bye <laughs>